Hello Inferno World friends, so in this time we are about to see a high skill match, uh, disclaimer, I lose this match, but you know what, we are not here to to, to witness a um, 100% success rate, or just um, me bragging about um, the deck being perfect, so yeah, this is about learning, so in this case, we are gonna, we are gonna learn about some misplays that I did, but we are also gonna um, showcase a really nice um, FTK hand in game two. So anyway, no more spoiler, and uh, let's begin. We lose the dice roll, and we are going up against Frankie's Brave. And what did he open? He opens a Frankie's and Brave, and a hand drop. Why not? What do we have? Nice um, combo pieces and nip. So this should just trade with this. But you know what? Uh, let's see how the, how is he gonna sequence. He does the typical play. So here I we I was wishing that this was roll. So I I'm not playing draw in the main deck at the moment, but maybe I should because it's it's more impactful as a one of hand traps. Because it stops Brave and something else, like the lingering effect. So here he does the cute combo to avoid Ash. Then he summons this guy. Then here he should have used this to grab the negate, dump this, and summon the negate. One, two, three, four, at the fifth, uh, like a fifth summon. But he doesn't, he gets confident. He th he's thinking I don't have any hand drop, so I take advantage of that and use Nibiru before he can summon the rider. Yeah, we could have used this before he add the the rider, so that way he cannot summon it and have like two bodies for, I mean this plus Nibiru token for the DPE, but I was like. He summoned uh, Doodle, he milled this, he has he add pranks. I mean that can only mean he already have pandemonium in, in pandemonium in hand. It's the only way that he is not milling pandemonium and he's not adding pandemonium. So if he already have pandemonium, that means this is already life, that means this is already a token, that means he already have DPE access doesn't matter if he search if he summoned this or not so at that point I decided that I should nip after he searches this because if I nip before he's gonna search enchantress uh, to put it on graveyard as follow-up so yeah I think this was the correct play because I could read that he already had access anyway so he summons DPE Pop snip and then without the gun extender. So at this point we should win. Because he has two interruptions and we have like full engine, five cards. And Dolphin should trade with Ash. What's the problem here? The problem is two. First that I get greedy. I don't wanna discard of Dolphin right now. I wanna use Isol Search first. And second I am, um, yeah, basically that's the main issue. Because I should think that if this is Ogre or Ash, I'm winning if I sequence correctly. If this is Nip, nip then I don't think I have any answer. So I should just assume this is Ash, Ogre, and, F and, and OTK. I, I don't know what, what I was thinking because Oh, yeah, I was thinking that he, he wouldn't ash Durendal, but but what if he did? Like, my theory is that Durendal should be used early, so DPE doesn't trade with Durendal uh, equipped on a monster to get extra value. Um, but my theory is also that every time that we summon Isolt, uh, they use DPE. So if we can get to Isolt, get DPE, then we can use Durendal. Um, to get red layer, to summon red layer, 
recover red layer, some dolphin. The problem here is what if he ash Durendal? So if we start with Durendal and it gets ash, then we are losing because we only have three bodies and we need four bodies to, to push through DPE. So the correct play 100% was red layer and then normal summon dolphin. Then that, that may even be enough to bait DPE. He, he could use DPE to pop dolphin so I don't get rid of the ash. That would have been, that, that would have been really good. But we will never know because I didn't do this. Uh, if he didn't DPE, we should just discard DDR because we already know that he has a 2k uh, monster in hand. So, oh, never mind, never mind. This is lowering red layer attack. So, yeah, still, we discard DDR. Uh, we take this or maybe take a prank it or maybe nothing. But then we still have access to four monsters, so we can go into Isolde, get DPE, and then put a second Isolde and win. So yeah, this is a good lesson. Like Also, at this point, I mean, some opponents should, uh, should think that Ash on Isolde's second effect is the correct move, and they should let this resolve. Because then I resolve this, I put another extender, I make this all again, then he gets, he hits with Ash. But he's like, you know what? I know he has a dead gear freed, so if I Ash this, he needs two extenders to win. So that's also good reasoning to Ash here. And he does that. At this point, I'm like, is he winning? Yeah, yeah, he's winning because he has very venging. 4k 6k then ash verte is 2k with unicorn this is the nice part he opens exodia pranks brave double infernib this is like the best three hand traps you can open against infernoble and what do you think is gonna happen well cross out can take care of these two or this and these four can do a lot. So what, what, how would you sequence? I think number seven Ogier is uh, is a no-brainer. Is the normal sound because these are extenders. What should we mill? Gemba because we are gonna mill three for salt. Maybe, but in this case, uh, Durendal to make Gearfit life as early as possible. That's also no choice. Because then we summon Gearfree, then summon Renault, grab the Durendal. Um, yeah, that's a possibility. Then we can make the Sold, and then we we'll get equipped to Gearfree as the fourth summon being is Sold. So, yeah, we didn't do any of that. So, we are going for maximum value. We summon Renault, grab Flint. Someone flint, so we already have a level 1 tuner extender on board. So this plus dolphin can make an early herald. So my play here is I have two extenders in hand, so I'm gonna use this because if he gamma or ogre is fine, we just summon Oliver equ equipping ogre using Oliver effect and, and we lead. We still have cross out for a second hand run. So we go for the add. We mill three for his. Here he should have used Imperm, I think. Uh, maybe his thought process was I'm gonna hold these two until the end, and this is gonna be a flex, a flex card. But yeah, he should have Imperm here. So now I'm gonna. And he's thinking. We are checking at the graveyard because when we look at the graveyard, the opponent think, think we are going to add blade. Uh, so him, he, he, even if he has Nibiru or some hand wrap, he could like wait until we add back this because he thinks that's going to interrupt our play even more, which is not, it's not wrong. But in this case, we are just checking the graveyard 
uh, to bluff because we want to discard connector because we want all gear graveyard effect to be to be useful so uh, because we have gear fit if we didn't have gear fit a hundred percent we were equi equipping all gear to be sold before we summon this to play around gamma better because yeah yeah anyway uh, the, the thing is that it works we check out the graveyard he said okay and we just discard from hand he imperms and I mean for me this is like a low impact imperm this imperm is not a, like like imperm on Aurora Dome. this is like a veiler so there is the the argument of not using cross out here and save this for Nibiru but at the same time uh, my file philosophy with cross out is that it is so unlikely that the opponents open the card that we want to cross out that we should use this as early as possible this, the moment that we have a, a card a hand drop to, to use this we should use it even if it's in a low hand low impact hand drop like ash uh, because if not then this may be dead so in this case i'm like yeah i'm gonna use it because if he's negating in this imprint with this it means he's, he want to protect uh, something, probably a Prankis with, with low attack. I mean, any any Prankis is lower than this also. Yeah. Um, I want to get her knowledge. And if he already has Nibiru, we are playing through that because this is Herald. And then this plus this is Halki. So it makes sense to use Crossout. We hit the jackpot, ja um, jackpot because he had another Imperm. And he cannot change this because this is supposed to be on board. So now this is getting double value. I mean, this is this can be a, a chalice on the opponent's turn, but you know, yeah, we rather he, that he has a chalice that, than an imbram. So we hit fancies. He decided to nip here. I mean, if he didn't, we were making herald, and then summon Oliver. So it's fine that he nips. And now we can just full combo with the Nibiru token. Uh, of course, our full combo is not going to be for interruptions because we already use Renault effect. So we can only put three interruptions, but the gear fit is going to be the fourth. So yeah, it's FTK for sure. So with these two equips we can make omega um, herald charles we are not playing savage and it it wouldn't be useful but you know what omega does the same because this any of this is trading with savage so so omega is actually better in case he top sex uh, like a dark ruler mm, so we just make this combo where we can use charles pop uh, to pop this so we end on three interruptions against one impermanence and charles and gearfrit are protected with oliver so this can only hit herald so yeah that's pretty much it he tops the token collector <laughs> um yeah not enough anyway so game three mm. And just so you know, here we have like 14 hand drops, but it was not enough. And he, he, every game he opened uh, kids and, and Brave. And you know what? This is like only seven copies. So this shouldn't be that common, but yeah, he opens again Exodia and we don't. I mean, this is pretty close to Exodia because this can push through something. We just need to top deck like Imperm. And that's like the only good top deck that we can have. So he just full combo. He he summoned this uh, to play around Nip uh, now. So in game one, he didn't, he misplay. He realized that and he combos correctly now. Yeah, he does all the standard shenanigans. He even stopped, I mean, he, he draws droplets. 
Now France is gonna get him. Don't tell me. Okay, yeah, of course it has to be another interruption. So yeah, he put the full board of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven interruptions. Yeah, this is not breakable by any means. Because yeah, this trade trades with Brave. Gearfish trades with this, double Rayeki. I mean we, we top the card dead card. <laughs> double characters. And we didn't see any hand drop, so yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't think we have any chance. But you know what? I think why not play it out? It's not gonna be like two minutes. So I think it's pretty quick just to, to see how unbreakable it was. <laughs> and if he misplays, to see if he misplays. He DP here. Um, for one second, I thought that we had a chance. What chance? You you mean? Here, if he didn't change pandemonium, if he wanna get greedy, like think, okay, he's gonna equip Durendal now, so I'm gonna wait for him to commit this or a third body. We could just summon Fleur, and Fleur could negate this. I mean, in theory. But he had draw blade and he had two hand drops, so yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's just GG. Yeah, not, not too much to do. <laughs> anyway, so that's the replay. Uh, we cannot always win. I mean, we, we have uh, an opportunity in game one, so we learn from that. Uh, and game two was amazing. <laughs> it's the first time that I FTK through double imper Nibiru, but you know, you know, the deck. The deck has his, its pros and cons. I think game three was just bad RNG. And yeah, it happens. Hope you learned something from this match and see you in the next video.